seminar was kind of a just trying to distill some of the things that Matt, myself, and some of the other uh, folks at um, Simplis have kind of discovered over the years that will help you work faster using uh, Symmetric Simplis. So I've broken it out into four different categories, uh, from schematic to waveform viewer to symbol editor to um, kind of the user interface. And I think realistically within an hour I'm going to get through those first three topics, and um, uh, three first three sections, and we're just going to kind of launch into it. It is a, uh, it's an a la carte webinar. It's not really following a, a very uh, diehard theme, so um, I'll just kind of tell you we might be jumping around a little bit here. So first, uh, first item is copy hierarchy, and I don't know how many folks are using copy hierarchy, but uh, this is a really useful tool to archive a schematic design. So if you have a top-level test bench schematic, it uses a number of uh, schematic components to define, a, say, a controller or a, a power system, then you can make an archive copy of that using file copy hierarchy. And when you run that menu, you will uh, be prompted to get a new directory to put these files into. And um, Symmetric Simplest basically burns down through the entire hierarchy, figures out which blocks are used and which blocks aren't, and it only copies the blocks that are used. So you can have multiple unused blocks in the, uh, in the directory that will not get copied out. And the only kind of two key points here is that those schematic paths uh, have to be relative paths. So when we place schematic components, we place them relative path. And that the hierarchy is something like uh, a top-level schematic with uh, your schematic components in that directory or in a subdirectory. So for example, on the left-hand side of the screen, I have buck converter, and then modeling blocks is a subdirectory that has all of my schematic components in it. So just to kind of give you a, a flavor of this, here's my top-level test bench. I can descend into this hierarchical block with control E, and I can descend again into another block with control E, and then control U will bring me up to, uh, twice will bring me back up to the top level. If I want to make a copy of this to send to a colleague, for example, or to archive at a certain state in the design, I would simply go File, Copy Hierarchy. And you'll get a hint box that pops up saying, you know, hey, you got to use relative paths and um, the, the path location requirement has to be met as well. So I'll just make a new folder here. I'll call it Temp. Um, and I'll select the Temp folder. And the next window that pops up says, we're going to copy all of these blocks. And so the blocks being copied are uh, from Buck Converter, the top level schematic, throughout all of the hierarchy so that the program automatically detects which blocks are used. And when you click OK on that, you'll see temp changed over here in my file view. And this has just the Buck Converter and its associated modeling blocks. So that kind of gives you a flavor that's very, very useful for archiving designs. The next, uh, next one that I think is really useful, a, a little tip and trick, is you can edit multiple fixed probes on the schematic at the same time. And you might ask, why would you want to do that? Well, that will allow you to, to put um, the curves generated by those probes onto the same graph and grid or axis um, quite easily. And so the way you would do that is you select multiple probes on the symbol, and then you just double click on one of them just as if you know, you're just double clicking on it as if you've got one selected. And you will not be able to change the label of the curve because that would make all of the probes identical. We don't want to do that exactly. And then you can edit the probe properties and we'll leave the name or the curve label intact. So then we'll basically make these probes all identical. So they'll have the same graph name, the same axis name. And as a result, these probes will output curves to the same uh, graph and axis or grid. So I can actually just kind of show you kind of as a flavor here, this buck converter, if I run this schematic, um, I have high side gate and low side gate, HG and LG. They're out here on digital axes right now. But what if I want to move both of those to a common axis by themselves or common grid? I can select both of them, and I'm doing that just with the standard Windows method. You select one and then you press and hold control key select the next one. You can either double click or press F7 at this stage. 
And you'll notice this probe dialog looks just like our standard probe dialog with the exception that the curve label is disabled or grayed out. So it's currently saying these probes are on a digital axis. So let's choose a new grid and we'll give it a name so that we know uh, those will come out to a new grid all by themselves. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about organizing curves later in the, um, in the webinar. And then let's give it um, a display order. So I want to push these new curves out onto a grid above the out and you know because I've prepared this I know this has a sort order of uh, capital A in the alphabet and zero comes before A so that means we're gonna promote the new grid above the out. So this is basically just this arbitrary string just does an alphabetic um, sort. And if I click OK on this, and before we go further, let me just show you. If you double click on LG, you'll see it has still the same curve label because we didn't change it. It has used a separate grid. It has the axis name and the display order. And we should see the same effect here on HG. So in doing so, I've been able to, if I run the simulation, we'll output the new LG and HG curves to a separate grid. It's coming above the out. The old ones are still here just because uh, we've got persistence, so we're keeping the old versions of those um, curves. So that's a really handy way when you're going to go organize your uh, curves, how you want your curves to come out on the graph viewer, and I'll talk about that in greater detail in the waveform viewer section. But being able to co select probes that you want to come out to a common grid or graph or axis um, is a really handy way of doing it and it allows you to do a lot of work with a lot fewer clicks. So the second item here is um, <clears throat> is uh, highlighting and unhighlighting nets. Okay, so we had a couple of questions come in. I'll just uh, I'll answer that last one, Matt. Maybe you can grab the other one. Um, uh, you, you cannot uh, delete the lowest grid. This was the question. This is our default grid. It's always here. If you don't put a probe out or a curve out on that grid, it will still persist. Um, so I'll just say that up front. Um, I'll talk about that more in the waveform viewer section. So let's see, I think I can probably just close the waveform viewer. We're not going to be using that next. So highlighting and unhighlighting nets. Uh, very, very useful for debugging designs, and I've, I've used this for years and years, and just recently in version 8 we assigned keyboard shortcuts to it. So the letter uh, number key 9 above the I key on the regular keyboard is uh, will highlight a net, and then you see your mouse turns into a probe, and we'll highlight that. And let's press 9 again, we'll highlight the switch node for example. And just to show you how this works, if you descend into the hierarchy, we've uh, highlighted throughout the hierarchy. And um, as a result, we've got the switch node is highlighted here in light blue. Now I made a comment in here about air wiring. So air wiring, so connecting nets or parts on a schematic but using terminals or module ports to do it. So um, you'll notice boot, which I selected and should be pink. This is the boot pin here. You notice that's not selected or highlighted inside of the hierarchy. And the reason why, if you zoom in, you'll see it's just a direct connection with no wire. So if I add wire to that, so I've got a piece of wire I can select. And I'll just ascend back up to the top and I'll start all over again. So I'm going to press 8. 8 unhighlights all nets. And then I'm going to press 9. I'm going to highlight boot. Press 9 again. And I'm going to highlight switch. If I now descend into the hierarchy, you'll see boot is highlighted. So we get a number of schematics, uh, you know, that we're trying to debug for tech support where there's zero wire length in between a, a terminal or a module port and a symbol pin. It is almost impossible to debug how those are wired together. So just the suggestion is, um, you know, when you're building your schematics, you know, leave some wire. Um, it'll make the hierarchy highlighting work um, 
much better. So again, I can press eight, that'll unhighlight everything.